joining us now to talk about your health, Dr. Stephen Zinn, director of the University of Maryland Children's Hospital and chair of pediatrics at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Doctor, thank you for joining us. We're seeing reports of children's hospitals around the country facing a surge in cases of RSV. What, what are you seeing there? Well, I think our experience is very similar to what others have reported uh, in the news media. We are seeing a very significant increase in RSV uh, at, a, at a point in time when we generally don't see RSV. So we're about two months ahead of when we would have expected to see RSV. And uh, we are uh, uh, struggling to uh, manage our bed situation so that we can take care of all the children uh, that need our services in the state of Maryland. And at this point, I think we're doing an outstanding job with our partners of making sure that uh, every child who needs a bed can get a bed. Are we close to a, a, a critical situation? I, you know, certainly hope not. Well, uh, no one anticipated uh, RSV occurring so early. And we also didn't anticipate uh, for RSV to uh, occur at the same time that flu is occurring and the same time that uh, rhinovirus, which is the common cold, is occurring. And we're also seeing some enterovirus. So we, we are definitely uh, having some difficulty. But what I would say is uh, one of the things we learned in COVID is that communication is really important. Uh, and I, I really appreciate that the uh, hospitals in the state of Maryland that have uh, pediatric wards that take care of children, we've uh, managed to communicate very well almost daily now to get an idea of which hospital has uh, what sort of pediatric beds. And so we've sort of established an incident command of sorts to make sure that uh, we know exactly what beds are available down at the University of Maryland versus Johns Hopkins, Sinai Hospital, GBMC, and others. And uh, we are working very closely and very well to make sure that we can put the right patients in the right hospitals. And, and for right now, it's allowing us to, to really, uh, I think, uh, stretch our resources in a way that's very helpful to the families of Maryland. What, what is this virus, RSV? It's, it's not something new, correct? Correct. Um, RSV is a common virus, respiratory syncytial virus. Uh, it is something that we see every year. We generally see it peak uh, later in the year. I would say more uh, towards uh, December, January. Interestingly, we haven't seen much RSV during the COVID pandemic. So for the last two years, uh, we have seen very little RSV and uh, we are suddenly uh, seeing uh, significantly increased numbers of kids coming down with that virus. And the theory is that now the world is pretty much wide open and you have people who were uh, uh, previously unexposed to it, all of a sudden everybody's getting exposed. Well, um, there are a lot of theories that uh, are being discussed, but I, I think the one that, that you articulated uh, perhaps makes the most sense. So, so if, if you think about RSV, uh, it, it is, uh, for adults, it's, it, it's a pretty routine uh, viral infection, not very serious, but the newborn zero to six months are at a significant risk from this virus. And so are the six to 12 month old population. So uh, generally there's a subset of the kids in the first year of life that get RSV every year, but for the last two years that hasn't happened. So we now have uh, zero to one, one to two and two to three year olds who've never seen RSV. And now that we're no longer uh, socially distancing now that uh, we're no longer wearing masks and everything's trying to get back to normal. I think what we're seeing is two or three times the number of kids who've never seen RSV suddenly get it at once. And so um, I, I don't think the virus has become more virulent. Uh, I don't think the immune systems of 
uh, children has been changed. But I think what we're seeing is two or three years worth of kids who've never seen RSV suddenly come down with it. Why is it that most children handle it and get past it as, as if it was a, a common cold, as I understand it, and, and some children become critically ill? Can you, can you forecast who is going to be susceptible to, to having a, a really serious case of it? Right. Well, the at-risk population is uh, zero to six months and six months to a year. So if you look at children under a year of age, they are the ones most at risk. And one of the reasons is that this is a respiratory infection. Uh, it enters the body primarily through the ears, nose, mouth, and it causes a lot of mucus, so runny noses. In babies, in very young babies, particularly babies that are breastfeeding or even bottle feeding, uh, they become obligate nose breathers. So when they're feeding, they can only breathe through their nostrils. Their nostrils are very small, much easier to just get, uh, you know, run into some obstruction, get clogged with mucus and have trouble breathing. So, so that's the population. Now, why some kids do better than others, even in the first year of life? Um, you know, again, there might be a subset of kids who do have an underlying immune issue, but generally it's, it's kind of just luck of the draw. If, if you can keep your baby relaxed, calm, if you can make sure they're hydrated so that those secretions uh, don't, don't become so tenacious, so sticky, then you have a really good chance of, of weathering this at home and, and not coming into the hospital. Advice for parents, how do they know uh, at, at what point do they start to get worried and, and how do they decide when and, and where to turn for care? So this is a very difficult time period because we have um, rhinovirus, the, sort of the common cold, which is generally not very serious. Uh, we do have RSV, we have flu, there may be some residual COVID and, and there also, um, there's a, a blip of enterovirus. So all of these viruses can cause symptoms very similar. RSV is the one that's causing the most havoc. And so as a parent, I think number one, you have to uh, pay attention, as of course, which all parents do, and, and monitor how your child is breathing. If you have any concerns about how your child is breathing, um, that should trigger a phone call to your uh, caregiver, your pediatrician, uh, nurse practitioner, family practitioner, or a visit to the urgent care center. So I, I would definitely know exactly where the closest urgent care center is. And if you believe your baby's having trouble breathing, you really need to get in touch with a care, health care giver very quickly or, or make the decision to go to urgent care. That, that's the one thing that you have to um, pay attention to. Uh, but if you can keep your baby calm, if you can keep them hydrated and they're doing okay, then I think it, it, it's fine uh, to try stay at home. But if you have any concerns, uh, a, a trip to your uh, pediatrician or to urgent care would be indicated. Coming to a pediatric emergency room is not a bad idea, but I will say that uh, we are inundated uh, with uh, families coming down to the emergency room. So you, you might do better by uh, calling your a uh, pediatrician or a caregiver first to get some guidance. And, and signs that the, the baby's uh, or the, the young child is really laboring to, to breathe, not getting enough oxygen, that's an emergency. Correct, correct. So if it looks like they're struggling, if they are, uh, if they're, if you're getting a sense that they're wheezing or making any kind of no noises trying to breathe in or breathe out, if you see, um, chest movements that you've never seen before that that's the indication to, to get help and and again you know in an extreme case uh you know call 911 what what do you do for uh, young patients at the hospital the the treatment for rsv is generally supportive so the key is to make sure the baby's getting enough oxygenation so uh, giving the baby uh, oxygen uh, through a number of different uh, ways uh, is a big help. Um, that helps slow down their breathing, makes them more comfortable. 
and uh, intravenous fluids. So it is critical that these kids stay hy hydrated. If you become dehydrated and you're having trouble breathing, you know, that, that's a recipe for a ser serious problem. So when, when these families do come into the hospital with their kids, uh, we do put, uh, we do, do use uh, little, little cannula, little tubes we put in around the nose to help the babies breathe, or we'll put a mask on. Um, and in, in many cases, we need to put a, an intravenous line in to hydrate the baby. But then it's, uh, it's supportive. It takes a number of days. But generally, uh, the type of care you can get in the state of Maryland for your child um, generally results in a very positive and good outcome. Lastly, anything we should, we should all be doing from a uh, prevention standpoint as we head into what looks like it may be a serious flu season and, and so forth? Yeah, great question. And, and I, think, I think that's an important question. So I, I appreciate you raising it. You know, we've been so focused on COVID and uh, most people have probably gotten COVID at this point. Uh, a large number of the population have been vaccinated. And so there's no, no one's wearing masks, no one's concerned. Uh, we're trying to get back to normal, but it's hard for people to remember that during the winters, during flu seasons, there are some common sense things that we still have to do. So if you have a cold, you know, try stay away from uh, people, you know, consider wearing a mask. Uh, if you sneeze or cough, make sure that, you know, you cover your mouth. If you have a child who's got a runny nose or not feeling well, don't send them to daycare or to play groups. So a lot of the things that was routine and common two years ago before COVID have kind of fallen by the wayside because we're just, I think, just so exhausted from COVID. But we have to go back to doing the routine things we used to do. If you have a fever, stay home. If you're feeling sick, stay home. Don't send your kid to school if they're not feeling well. Um, again, you know, wear a mask or, or isolate yourself from other, you know, friends or family if you're not feeling well. And, and I think those types of things can make a very dramatic difference and decrease uh, what we're struggling with right now, decrease numbers of cases of these viral infections in kids and adults. And I would also say the flu vaccine is very effective, and that is something that uh, this would be the time to get it. If you haven't got your flu vaccine, if your child hasn't been vaccinated, this is the time uh, to get it because it will be effective in a couple of weeks. And, and I think we are going to be entering uh, a very, very serious flu season as well. Stephen Zinn at the University of Maryland Children's Hospital. Sir, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.